I want to finish what I started this morning, <laughs> and I began, well, it's not a sermon series, it's, and, w- and when I say sermon series, um, this debate about sermon series, blah, 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 this, but I just get a sermon, and it's too long to preach in one sermon, <laughs> okay? If I really preached all of what I wanted to preach this morning, we probably would have been here at about three o'clock, so, so for, for your sake and for the mind's sake, um, really want to talk about God's plan for your life. And the Lord just laid it upon my heart. And I talked to you this morning about God's plan, God's awesome plan for your life. And I told you because of the fact of creation, the fact that you've been made. And in the revelation, the Word of God, in the Scriptures that tell us, even if you have failed, even if you've had tragedies, even whatever's happened, God's awesome plan continues. And then uh, for salvation, the fact that He died on a cross for you and, and He shed His blood. And, and uh, that should tell you that, and one thing. All righty. Check one, two, three. You're going to bring me a check. You're going to bring me a check. You're going to bring me a check. (laughs) All right. Okay. Are we back online? One thing I kind of slipped over this morning that I want to, before I start this message, is your age. Your age. Um, I saw on YouTube a a lady that's in her 90s. She, She, her name is Vesta Mangum, and she preached as powerful a message. She reminded me of my Aunt Lola Clack, and uh, she was just, she just was speaking, and and really, your age, I understand the body has limitations, but I mentioned that. God has an awesome plan for your life to the moment He takes you to glory, and even if you find yourself in a hospital or a nursing home or wherever life takes you, events take you, God can use you wherever you, I know you say you're not ever going to go to a nursing home, but don't ever say what you're never going to do. I don't intend to go to a nursing home, amen? And if I do, I'm going to be healthy, wealthy, and praise God leading people to Jesus, amen? But we don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what God's plan for our life is totally. Now, we do know that things happen sometimes out of our control. Now, y'all look at me are so sad. I don't know why, but I'm telling you, God has an awesome plan for your life. I don't care where you are. Amen. We never expect to be in a hospital. We never expect to be, like I said, in a nursing home. We don't expect it. We don't believe for those things. But if it happens, God's not finished with you. Amen. God has an awesome plan for your life. And number two, the devil has an awful plan for your life. Would you stand with me in John chapter 10, verse 10? uh, You say, well, pastor, I don't know that I want to hear about that. Well, you probably need to be reminded because I found out that that when I... When I hear how bad the devil has a plan for me, and knowing that God's going to override the devil if I let him, that will give me rejoicing. Amen? John chapter 10 and verse 10. If you're there, would you say amen? The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. But I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Read that with me. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Listen now, but I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Father, thank you for that awesome plan for our life. And Lord, expose the awful plan of Satan. Uh, Lord, that we'll know beyond a shadow of a doubt, God, uh, that we're going to follow you no matter the temptation, no matter the discouragement, and we'll Give you the praise for that awesome plan in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. And as you're being seated, tell somebody God has big plans for your life. God has big plans for this church. Just like God has an awesome plan for your life, Satan has an awful plan for your life. His plan is to steal, kill, and destroy. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8 says, be sober and be vigilant 
Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. It says he's a roaring lion or like a roaring lion. He is walking about. He is seeking whom he may devour. Please understand this is the terminology of a stalker. And we know what a stalker is, somebody that follows another person in order to do them harm. In fact, if you'll go to Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 through 4, you'll see an amazing picture, an amazing picture. And as I'm reading this passage, remember what God told Jeremiah that before I formed thee in the womb, uh, I had a plan for you. Now notice this passage. Uh, it says, there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, pain to be delivered. Verse 3, and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them down to the earth. Now watch this. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was having a baby, to devour the child as soon as it was born. And I tell you, God said, I knew you before you were born. But Satan is also waiting for you to be born because just like God has an awesome plan for our life, uh, the devil has an awful plan for our life. He's ready to devour your life. He's ready to notice the, the imagery here. And I don't have time to go into the theological and in the, uh, uh, the aspects of this prophecy and what it stood for. I can do that later. But basically get the idea of Satan waiting for that baby because Satan has a plan for that baby. He wants to pounce on it. He wants to lead it in the wrong direction. He wants to destroy it. He has an awful plan for that baby's life. And truth enough, he has an awful plan for all of our lives. There's a scripture that talks about the wheat and the tares. If you'll go to Matthew chapter 13 and uh, chapter 13 and verse 27, Jesus is talking about the wheat representing the true child of God and the tares representing the child of the devil or the enemy seed or those who have sold their lives to his awful plan. And the wheat and the tares, uh, the tares actually uh, can look like the wheat, but they're not the wheat. And in verse 27, it says this, so the servant of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in thy field? From whence hath it tares? Now look at verse 28. He said unto them, What church? An enemy has done this. An enemy has come in with those wheat and has tried to sow in tares, and sure enough, there are tares all over and so close to the wheat. And he said, Can, should we chop down the tares? He said, no, not yet, because they are so close to the wheat. If I render judgment on the tares, it might slip over and cut down some of the wheat. No, let the tares keep on growing. Let the wheat keep on growing, but there's coming a separate Separation day. And that tells me right there, we can keep on growing. It doesn't matter how people treat you. It doesn't matter if you've been through a divorce. It doesn't matter what the devil has done. You keep growing. You keep going. You keep serving God. Don't you look behind you. Look out of what's ahead of you. The devil has an awful plan, but God has an awesome plan, and he's going to have the last say. I wish somebody would say amen tonight. It says an enemy has done this. And any time I hear about divorce, I say an enemy has done that to that marriage. When I hear of drug addiction, I say an enemy has done that, fentanyl and methamphetamines. And when I hear a child is abused or when I hear of suicide, I say an enemy has done that. Uh, when I hear of abortion, uh, when I hear somebody who's offended in the church because somebody didn't shake their hand, uh, I say an enemy has come in. Uh, but listen, uh, Satan has a plan for every home. Uh, he has a plan for every teenager. 
major. He has a plan for every nation, every mother, every father. He has an awful plan for every pastor. And But listen, here is the victory. Even though he has an awful plan, we can jump on God's agenda and we can see that it's turned around for our good. What the devil meant for evil, somebody say it tonight. God can turn it around for good. You say, Pastor, why are you telling us this? To be forewarned is to be forearmed. We're not to go back to 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. It says, be sober and be vigilant. That means in today's language, be careful. Watch out. One scripture says, keep a cool head. Another scripture says, stay alert because just as much as God has an awesome plan, if we're not careful, if we're not sober and vigilant, if we're not proactive, if we're not wide awake, if we don't monitor our teenager's cell phone, if we don't uh, be careful and ask our brothers in the Lord, are you staying clean in your private thoughts and private life? If we don't, if we don't stay proactive in coming to the house of God and being convicted and, and being and challenged each and every week, uh, we'll, be, we'll be finding ourselves slipping uh, and we won't be vigilant and we're not keeping a cool head uh, and we're not staying alert. Uh, and what we're doing is we're sliding back to that awful plan. Uh, you see, backsliding doesn't start missing one service. Uh, backsliding is a process. Uh, it's, a, it's a progress uh, of events in your life. Uh, and the, the, the scripture tells us, uh, be careful, be vigilant and be watching out for Satan's awful plan for your life. Number one, when it comes to temptation. Now, I know most, most of us are over 50 in this service tonight, but we're all tempted. <laughs> and we need to remember that temptation and consequences. Say the word, and consequences. Now, it's not a sin to be tempted, but it's a sin when we yield to temptation. But when we're tempted, one of the things when we're tempted to sin, when we're tempted to lie, cheat, steal, do things wrong, have a relationship outside of our marriage, when we're tempted to, to look at things we ought not to look at, do things we ought not to do, when we're tempted uh, to drink, to do drugs, do all of these things, when we're tempted to be hard and, and unforgiving, we need to remember that when we're tempted, it's not a sin to be tempted, but if we yield to that, we got to remember that word called consequences. Why? Because Satan has an awful plan for your life. Look at what the Bible says about Proverbs, uh, about alcohol. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 1 says, Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth its cup color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. Um, one scripture says, When it sparkles. For, look at verse 32. For at the last, it bites like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Now, this is talking about alcohol, but it could talk about any temptation that we have because all temptation looks pleasant to start with. In fact, sometimes we can say, well, I deserve a little fun. I deserve a break. I don't have to be holy. I'm just a human. So let me give in to this. God doesn't care. He does care. And there is consequences. And I know that in speaking of alcohol, it could be uh, anything. Uh, alcohol, uh, it just looks so, you know, they have the commercial with the ice coming down the beer can, uh, and, and alcohol is wrong. Uh, and, and, man, I can just... <laughs> we going all right we got it back now <laughs> Am I going to preach through three microphones tonight? <laughs> Praise God we'll have we'll have it all before it's over with. But uh, this is orange, right? All right. All right. All right. Hallelujah. I ain't going I ain't going to let this rob the anointing tonight. <laughs> Praise God. The devil's a liar. He's got an awful plan, but God's got a greater plan. Amen. And we will not be defeated. Can I get a witness out there? 
But alcohol looks so good and wine and man, the, the, it looks like, man, I'm just going to have a party. I'm just going to get a little light buzz, you know, blah, blah, blah. Listen, I went to East Carolina. I didn't go to home Bible college, so I know what all that stuff's about. And by the way, this is probably not a bad time for me to talk about the sin of alcoholism. We believe and teach that you should not drink alcohol, period, because uh, there is nothing good that can come of it. Uh, and people say, well, I can just drink in moderation. But you may say that, but understand Satan has an awful plan for your life. Uh, number one, you're setting an example for others. Uh, is Jesus not enough for your life? Uh, is the joy of the Lord and the new wine of the Holy Spirit, does that not do all that needs to be done? Why do you need to have a have a course? light or a Budweiser? Why do you need to go down to the liquor store and, and here you are shouting one minute to, and then you're getting a fifth the next minute? No, it's not right. It's not good. Uh, Satan has an awful plan. He wants to hook you on alcohol to make you drunk, uh, to make you do things when you're not, when you're drunk that you wouldn't do when you're sober. It wants, he wants to destroy your family and he wants your children to see it so they will go in. Not only to alcohol, but other drugs. Uh, alcohol is a gateway drug. Uh, it starts with one little sip of drink, uh, and, and if that thing keeps on going, uh, it'll be down to the worst drugs of all. Uh, why are you saying that, preacher? Because I'm sad to say, Satan has an awful plan, uh, and when you think about temptation, don't forget the consequences. What are the consequences of alcoholism? Disease in your body. A car wreck in the middle of the night, killing some teenager. What are the consequences of, 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 uh, of adultery and fornication, busting up a family, bringing shame to the church uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, and uh, this, you don't see this on TV. You don't read about this on Facebook. Uh, uh, and those commercials about smoking, uh, I said the other night, the Marlboro Man, there were four men who posed as the Marlboro Man. Go Google it. All four of them died of cancer related somehow to cigarette smoking. Uh, my friend, we don't need to embrace Satan's awful plan for our life uh, when God's got a beautiful plan for our life uh, to be free, uh, to be joyful, uh, to, to be integrity, uh, to walk in the Spirit, in the Holy Spirit. Uh, somebody give him a hand of praise here tonight. You can play with sin if you want to. And the reason there's so much sin in America is because pulpits have quit preaching against the consequences of sin. They're, they don't want to run away the crowd. Uh, they want to tickle the ears. Uh, but my friend, uh, when you play with sin, there are consequences. His name was Steve Irwin. And he would take a crocodile and say, oh, she's a beauty, mate. <laughs> Do you remember him back about 20 years ago? I was reading a book by Charles Swindoll. And he referenced, he said, have you seen this man on TV who plays around with dangerous animals and laughs about it? He, Charles Swindoll said this about 25 years ago. He said, this man will not live to be an old man. And it wasn't long after I read that, that he's down there with the stingray. And the stingray took that tail and punched him right in the heart. Within 30 minutes, he was in eternity. Carla Nash had a pet monkey in her house that cuddled her and loved on her. But one day, that something went wild with that animal and literally ate her face off. I think about Roy Horn in Las Vegas, Nevada. They had that show with the white tigers. And he would love on the tigers and play with them and make them roll around. And some of you, that's the way you deal with sin in your life. You just play with it and think you're in charge. And right in front of a horrified audience, that tiger lunged on him and his jugular, and he almost died. And from that night to tonight, he quit messing with tigers. You go figure. People say, I got a pet snake. I'm not visiting you. <laughs> Pastor Jerry can. He's been to Vietnam. <laughs> That's why we have a team here, amen? <laughs> Pastor Jerry, don't you want to go visit that new member that has a snake in their house? <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. I'm not messing with those. Listen, don't play with your life, and don't play with your soul, because at the last, it bites. In fact, I preached a sermon right here in this pulpit, Living Waters, in 2003, I think, for a friend day, I think I said, I said that the eye of the tiger 
He attacked when least expected. Roy Horn was comfortable with that tiger. And least expected, he attacked when Roy Horn was in isolation. You go back and look at that show. There were times in that show when there were several people around, but that tiger knew when, when he was going to be all alone and when he was all alone. And that's what the devil wants to do. He wants to isolate you. He wants to keep you out of church. Uh, he wants to shut down the churches uh, like COVID-19 uh, because he knows he can get us uh, in isolation. And I know there needs to be times when we're safe and we have to shut down for health reasons uh, very rarely, but as, as far as an ongoing thing, that's what the devil wants to do and he uh, he listen Roy Horn was close enough to get bit <laughs> now if I'm going to play with tigers I'm going to have a little space between me and it amen come on now but I'll tell you, if you get close to sin, close to wrong relationships, if you get close to alcohol, if you get close to drugs, if you get in that environment, don't be surprised when at the last it's going to bite you and you must remember that Satan has an awful plan for your life when it comes to temptation and consequences. And then number two, when it comes to salvation and service. I said that this morning. I'm going to really preach it tonight because I'm looking at this congregation tonight. I don't see a lot of people dealing with methamphetamines here tonight. <laughs> I don't see a lot of people having flirting with affairs and stuff. Amen. I just don't see that a lot here in, in our local church. People watching may be dealing with it, and maybe one or two might be tempted in a fleeting thought. But here's really where I think uh, in salvation, and somebody say salvation, and service. Because what the devil does is if you get saved and he knows he can't stop you from getting saved, then the next thing is to get you to not do any service for the Lord. He wants to, you, you to embrace a lifestyle where you just don't do much harm to his kingdom. He does this through unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Somebody has wronged me. Somebody has hurt me. Somebody has abused me. Somebody has posted a bad post about me on Facebook. Somebody has, has talked about me and caused me not to get a promotion on my job. Somebody has done me wrong. Unforgiveness. Satan has an awful plan for your life because when you give in to unforgiveness, he loves that. Because there's only one path that unforgiveness is going to take you on. It's going to take you down to bitterness and hurt. And ultimately, if we're not careful, we will lose with God. Because the Bible says that God says, if you do not forgive those, neither will your Father forgive you. Because we should forgive no matter what. You say, how can I forgive? Because God has an awesome plan for your life. And that awesome plan is forgiveness. And if somebody has done you wrong, they love it when you're over there hurting. They love it when you're over there seething. Man, they're like, oh, well, man, I'm so glad I because I'm in their head now. But if they find out, oh, they've forgiven you, and, and I did all that wrong, and they it doesn't bother them, it bothers that person when it doesn't bother you. I said, God's got an awesome plan for your life. The blood of Jesus will wash every sin away and will help us. Can you say amen? He tries to bring fear into our life. Offense. Lack of going all the way with God. I'm saved, but I really don't need to be sanctified. I really don't need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Maybe brother so-and-so needs the Holy Spirit with the evidence of tongues, but I really don't need it. You know what? That's an awful plan for your life. God's awesome plan for your life is to be sanctified and to be filled with the Holy Spirit and pray through till you speak in that heavenly language. Amen. <laughs> You say, you believe in that? I do believe in it. On the day of Pentecost, uh, it says they all spake with tongues. Uh, you say, well, that was just on the day of Pentecost. Have you not read the rest of Acts? Have you not read the book of Corinthians? These people have to explain away the supernatural gift of speaking in tongues. Uh, but I'm here to tell you tonight, uh, don't get satisfied with just my name is in heaven and he's forgiven me of my sins. That's an awful plan for the, the devil to get you to sit down on the pew uh, and just not be involved uh, and just let others do it. Uh, Jesus did talk about being lukewarm. Uh, he said, I'd rather you be hot uh, or cold, uh, but if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Uh, listen, we need to get all 
all in to God. We need to get all in to serving Him. We don't need to be one foot in the world and one foot in the church. When it comes to salvation, let's also say, Here my Lord, use me because you've got an awesome plan for my life. One man said this, Christianity, if false, is of no importance. But if it is true, it is of infinite importance. Therefore, the only thing it cannot be is moderately important. <laughs> oh, when it comes to temptation and consequences, remember Satan's awful plan. When it comes to salvation and no service, remember Satan's awful plan. And then when it comes to eternity and forever. Eternity. How long is eternity? Brother Bird, my father and the Lord said, here's how to explain eternity from now on. There is no end. There is, it is forever and ever and forever ever the great Billy Sunday captivated auditoriums and he spoke to them of eternity he said imagine if a little bird were to take one little grain of sand and take that sand and fly a million years to a distant place and drop that grain of sand there fly another million years and get another grain of sand from earth fly a million years and drop it to the same place and then a million years back to get another grain of sand and another a million years going a million years coming he said this when that little bird will have transferred all of earth from this place to that place going a million years to and a million years from when that little bird will have transferred all of earth it will just be breakfast time in eternity. Where will you spend eternity? People are talking about the origin of species. Where did we come from? Did we come from primates? Did we come from, uh, you know, little tadpoles and, uh, and the prehistoric dinosaurs? Uh, people are talking about the origin of species. My friend, uh, you need to be more worried about the destiny of species. Where are we headed? Uh, where will we be 50 years from tonight? Well, I know that seems a long time away, uh, but friend, uh, we don't know what tomorrow holds, uh, and we don't know what accident may take place. Uh, we don't know what's going on in our bodies tonight. Uh, all I know is this. Uh, God has an awesome plan for your life uh, to spend forever and eternity uh, in a place called glory. Somebody say amen. 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 But on the other side, Matthew 25 and 34, then shall the king say to them on his right hand, come you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom. What church? Prepare from the foundation of the world. But now look at verse 41. Then he shall say unto them on his left hand. I always read this scripture. I get a little, a little uh, somewhat a little offended because I'm left-handed. <laughs> I mean, what's wrong with the left hand? <laughs> I say I'm left-handed just like President Barack Obama was. Just like President Bill Clinton was. Let me move on before I lose the anointing tonight. <laughs> I'm left-handed, but I golf right-handed. Amen. <laughs> Matthew 25 and 41 says, Then shall he say to them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and all his angels. Notice, go back, to, notice something. You, you might have missed this. Go back to verse 34. It says, Heaven was prepared for you. Turn around and tell somebody, heaven is for you. You're watching my live stream, heaven is for you. Now go to verse 41. He didn't say hell was prepared for you. He said hell was prepared for who? The devil and his angels. He didn't say you'll go to everlasting fire prepared for you. God didn't prepare everlasting fire for you. That's not his awesome plan for your life. People say God has preordained people to go to hell. That's blasphemy. God's not willing that any man should perish. 
You cannot ever convince me that God allowed a human being to be born knowing, knowing that he's going to send it to hell. I promise you every living, breathing soul that's ever walked across, across the crust of this earth has had an opportunity to turn their heart and life to the God who created the sun and the moon and the stars. And he is just in his final judgment. And we might not understand, and we need not, and we'd better not sit here while the heathen die and go to hell and say God will take care of them. No, we need to go out and preach the gospel to them. Amen. So don't you get spiritually lazy on that. We have a job to do. But at the end of the day, God did not prepare hell for you. You are for me. He prepared it for the devil and his angels. You need to think about that when you're tempted to sin. You need to think about that when you want to quit the church because the preacher didn't shake your hand. You need to think about that when, when somebody does you wrong. You need to think about that when it comes to alcohol and drugs and sexual uh, gratification outside the confines of marriage. Well, I'm just doing some old-fashioned holiness preaching tonight, but I'm here to tell you God on the other side has an awesome plan for your life. The thief cometh not but for to kill and to steal and destroy. John 10 and 10. But I am come that they might have a life and they might have it more abundantly. I'd rather, listen, I, I don't mean this wrong, but when I went to East Carolina, there was a bumper sticker that I saw that said, a bad day at East Carolina is better than a good day at NC State. <laughs> <clears throat> a bad day at East Carolina is better than a good day at NC State. You know how the, the college rivalries are. Well, let me just tell you something. A bad day in the church, and there comes bad days in the church, times when things don't go like they're planned, times when people have disagreements. There's no hurt like a church hurt, somebody said recently. But I'd rather deal with a bad day in the church because a bad day in the church is still better than the halftime of the Super Bowl. And tell your listeners that. Amen. A bad day at church is still better than the bar, the, the bar or the clubs or, or the break dancing. Just think about that. Break dancing? Sounds like you're going to break something. Amen. I'll tell you, there's something, there's, you get a Holy Ghost dance, hallelujah, and you're going to have joy unspeakable and full of glory. I wish somebody would get happy tonight. I said God's got an awesome, I said an awesome plan for my life. Why in the world do I want to do what the devil wants me to do? I don't want to go where he's going. He's going to hell, but I'm going to glory. I close with this true story. Years ago, down around Irwin, North Carolina, there was a church, and some man got into a Satan's costume. This was like 30 years ago. He had the pitchfork, the horns. He held up a sign that said, don't go. He stood out outside of a church down there. It was on Highway 82. Our conference headquarters is right down the road on Highway 82. But this was in Irwin, and he had a big sign that said to people driving by, don't go to church. He had a big sign that said, do sin, you know, do things wrong. And, and he, was, he was trying to say, don't come to this church. He said, don't go to this church. This place is not good. And he had his pitchfork, and it caused such a ruckus in the community. Parents drove by, and their kids broke out crying. Members of the church were calling the deacons. They called the law. It caused a big uproar, and all because the devil was trying to keep them from going to that church and putting up bad signs. Well, they finally, <laughs> they finally got a hold of the devil. Guess who it was? It was the pastor of the church. He said, I was just trying to show the world what the devil's trying to do. And they never forgot that. And don't you ever forget that that devil does have an awful plan for your life. Pick up your cross. Carry that cross. Because one day, you're going to lay it down for a crown. Whatever tears you shed for serving Jesus, 
are bottled up. And whatever battles you go through, you will win the victory. Don't let the devil keep you from being what God wants you to be. Would you stand with me tonight? And Father, thank you tonight for that awesome, awesome plan. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided, key of D, to follow Jesus. I have decided, have you decided to follow Jesus? Will you embrace that plan for God, your life? Will you say no to sin? Will you say no to putting off what God wants to do? Is the Lord dealing with you about a service that you need to do in the church? Have you been holding back on the Lord? I don't think most of you tonight are dealing with sin and the, the sense of drugs or alcohol or those things. But I can tell you, we all in this room tonight deal with our service to God, our obedience to Him, our love for our brothers and sisters. Can you just lift your hand and embrace his awesome plan? Lord, I'm surrendered to you. I'm going to pick up the cross. I'm going to forgive, Lord, when it hurts. I'm going to give, Lord, by faith. I'm willing to suffer like Moses said. Lord, I don't want the pleasures of sin for a season. I'd rather suffer with the children of God because I know you've got an awesome plan for my life. Oh, I bless you, Lord. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Devil, as a roaring lion, he walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He cannot devour everybody. He cannot devour you if you're suited up with the whole armor of God. He cannot devour you if you understand the power of the name of Jesus. He cannot devour you if you're washed in the blood and living a clean, pure, holy life. He has to seek the weak so he can devour them. So I want everybody to come to this altar and say, Lord, I'm coming to the altar. I'm coming to get suited up, fired up, and ready to go up. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. To Glory. follow Jesus, Jesus no, no turning back. Lord, I'm coming, and I'm laying it all on you altar once again. Glory. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus.
crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Knowing this, that the old man of sin is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is free from sin. Praise God, we died to the world. We were raised in the newness of life. We're suited up, praise God, and we're seeking God, and we're more than conquerors through him that loved us and gave himself for us. Father Sing it, brother. Jesus, I One accord, every, every praise, praise, every praise to our God. Sing In the name of Jesus, I bless you. I bless you with God's presence and anointing. In Jesus' name, I bless you, Brother Charlie. I bless you, every Brother Chris. Glory. Oh, my Savior, God, my Savior. Praises to our God, every word of worship, one accord, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God, oh glory, hallelujah to our God, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise, 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 every praise